Hey, everybody, checking out the Mike and JD Show YouTube channel. Uh, thank you for watching this video. If you could do me a huge favor and hit that like button, make sure you're a subscriber and also comment on this video and help us defeat the algorithm. I would greatly appreciate it. And while you're at it, if you like this video, head over to patreon.com slash the Mike and JD Show and become a Patreon subscriber today where you will get this audio uh, immediately as soon as it's done recorded way ahead of everybody else. And then of course it will be ad free. Thank you very much. Now enjoy the video. Hey, now it's Brace for Impact, and I'm your host, Mike Gilbert, and I'm uh, going solo on that ass, but it's still the same. We're talking TNA wrestling. I finally got it right. I've been doing this show for, man, we're coming up on three years now of doing the show. Pretty close, like, like a little over two and a half years, and I'm just so used to saying Impact Wrestling. It was weird. You know, I got out of the habit, um, and it took me a while to get out of the habit of calling it TNA, and then uh, finally I got started – you know, I got so used to calling it Impact Wrestling, and then they go back to TNA. But here we are, man, and uh, uh, things are things are going pretty well in the in the world of TNA. Um, well, there's some ups and downs, and we'll 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 get into that. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm a little bit a little bit late on this one. I, I do try to wake up super early on Saturday mornings to knock these out before the family gets up. But uh, I, I was not able to do it. But I should have a little bit more energy, so that's cool. So, um, but yeah, I actually slept in today, and then I had to take care of a bunch of stuff uh, for here. Did some stuff with the fam, and then now it's about 11:23 a.m. Uh, Hawaii Standard Time when I'm recording. So. Um, but yeah, lots to talk about in the uh, in the world of TNA and in the world of wrestling. There's uh, there's all kinds of stuff going on. Um, but I guess the top story. And before I get into the news, let me let me just uh, discuss some changes that are going to be made to the Brace for Impact. Um, so the rest of the year, um, Impact is no longer showing what you would call normal standard episodes. I think this past week. This past Thursday night was like their last of their regular type of episodes where they had they still had a little bit of storyline stuff, but I think that's all ending here um, and it's going to be done for the rest of the year. Um, so this show is going to continue. I should not miss a week. Uh, I will be here every single week on Patreon. So if you're watching this on our YouTube channel and uh, you guys have been getting this show for free, um, every I've been putting it posting it on like typically on Mondays. So I record usually on Saturdays uh, for the Patreon subscribers. I do a live version for Patreon. Um, at times I'll have some folks uh, jump in here. It's because it's not scheduled out in advance because I don't know exactly when I'm doing it. Sometimes they get to join me, sometimes they don't. But um, our Patreon community get actually gets this show about two days before everybody else. Um, and then I've just been unlocking it without actually promoting the fact that I lock it on YouTube. Um, I, I typically will unlock it at some point on Monday when I get around to it. Um, and so you, the YouTube, um, you guys have been able to watch this show for free uh, basically since it's um, since we began. There's been some several episodes that never got unlocked, but you guys have always gotten some type of impact content on the Mike and JD show YouTube channel. Um, and uh, Patreon has gotten every single bit of it. Um, they, they never miss anything. So um, before the rest of the year, I'm going to continue on uh, as normal for the Patreon audience, but because we don't really have any new episodes to talk about, like I know next week is going to be like, they're going to do the Turkey trot and they're going to do, um, like a Thanksgiving special is probably going to be some skits and some interviews and stuff like that. You know, that's, I, um, that's not, there's not, they're not really giving me much to talk about, but I'm going to still talk about s something on Patreon. Um, and then I think after that is the IPWF. And again, that's not really much to talk about, but Patreon audience is paying. And because they're paying um, and they want me to be miserable, I'm going to watch IPWF and I'll talk about it right here. Uh, and I'll talk about it right here on the Patreon. 
Um, and then after that, I believe they they might show some stuff from their Mexico show. But again, that's just matches. There's no real stories going on there. So there's not really much like talking about matches is great. And I love talking about matches. But if you don't really have stories involved, there's not really much to talk about. Um, but I'm going to continue to talk about that right here on the Patreon. And I'll talk about all the news that breaks right here on the Patreon. So you guys are going to get Patreon audience, patreon.com slash the Mike and JD show. You're going to, you're not going to miss a beat. And then when they don't have an episode, which I think that's coming up, they're probably going to be skipping some weeks as they prepare to, to relaunch as TNA in January. I'm, I will do some classic content and, um, do maybe watch along type stuff. I'm going to do some special stuff right here for the Patreon. So for YouTube, um, I will be doing my best to get clips out to you guys. Um, but that's going to be about it. You guys are not going to get full episodes the rest of the year. Um, and, it, and it's just because there's not really much to sink into, but if you really want the, if you really want the content, it's going to be on, it's going to be on Patreon. I'm going to, st I'm still committed to brace for impact on Patreon. And then as we launch into the new year, um, I'll go back to what we were normally doing, which was, um, which was me, you know, getting up on Saturday mornings and doing my typical brace for impact and, um, giving it to everybody on Patreon for free and live and, they get to be interactive and things like that. And then eventually, maybe Monday, maybe Tuesday, just uh, hitting the unlock button on YouTube. Um, and uh, But the audio has always been for Patreon. So if you just like to listen to this show, um, if that's your thing and you don't want to deal with the, the YouTube ads and all you want to do is listen to it, you can you know, be a premium subscriber and uh, join our Patreon and, uh, and do all that. Um, um, but so YouTube, I'm going to scale back on the brace for impact on YouTube. So I do apologize to you guys. I know some of you folks, you know, you're pretty overextended. You don't have a ton of money. And I, I get that. Um, and it's, it's more difficult to, you know, you really got to pick and choose what you're spending your money on. So those of you that are sticking around and picking or, and picking us to spend five bucks on, I really do appreciate you. Um, um, I, I really appreciate that. But and if you guys do have a little bit of expendable income and you want to, you want to join in on, on our Patreon adventure here, um, please, uh, consider it. I, I would be greatly appreciated. Um, and I will continue to stay loyal and faithful and, um, uh, you guys are my customers and I will provide the best possible content that I can provide every single week. Um, so that's, that's what it's going to look like for the YouTube for the rest of the year. Now, if there's a breaking news story, um, I will do my best to get that out to both the YouTube and the Patreon and do it in a way that everybody feels satisfied. Okay. Um, cause I know that the folks that do pay for the content, it's probably a little bit annoying that there's a lot of people that get it for free out there. And I get that. That's why I try to give it to you guys well in advance. So I'm going to do that in a way to where it goes to Patreon first and then there's going to be a little bit of a delay and then it goes up, uh, it'll go up on the YouTube. Um, but Brace for Impact, the weekly show remaining right, right here on the Patreon. Um, and then possibly some clips. Um, you know, JD is so good at, at, at clipping everything. So he's the one that does all the clips for our stuff, uh, for our, our main show. But for Brace for Impact, I do it all. And you could tell because <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> I just use, um, I use iMovie and I, I do the clips and, and, um, it just doesn't, you know, it doesn't look as good. The, the video quality is down and um, the, the the cuts are not as smooth. Like he puts effort into it. You know, this is what he does for a living. So he's he's very good at it. He's very, it's very natural. And I uh, and I am not. It's like um, a, one of my weaknesses. I do. I am trying to get better at it. But um, so I will try to get um, YouTube clips. So please don't just, uh, you know, unsubscribe to the YouTube because impact content or TNA content still coming to the YouTube. And then we'll be back uh, hot and heavy at the beginning of the year with the TNA rebrand and the TNA relaunch. But uh, rest of the year, we're going to scale back on the YouTube stuff for uh, Brace for Impact. But uh, thank you guys for being here. I really appreciate it. And we got lots of stuff to talk about. And our top story is uh, one Mr. Will William Osprey. Um, he has been the, the big time topic of a uh, conversation. So he, and, um, you know what, here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and pull something up while, while I, while I discuss this, but he wrestled Josh Alexander this week and I'm going to get into the, the, I'm going to get into the recap, um, here in a little bit, but he wrestled Josh Alexander this week and they had a hell of a match, of course. Um, and you know, probably, you know, it's hard to say. It's probably the best 
match on an episode of, of impact that there's ever been. Um, you know, some people will point to, you know, Speedball and Josh Alexander, Josh Alexander and um, TJP. You know, they went an hour and I really enjoyed that match. And it was, um, I think, looking back on it, I, I don't think it's going to hold up as well because it was a no audience match. But um, I think uh, I think that one's right up there for me personally. Um, there was a you know speedball and Kenny King, and I'm talking about Kenny King a little bit. He they did like an MMA style match that I just thought was was just uh, off the charts, and uh, and then um, you know of course uh, Frankie Kazarian versus Chris Sabian, Sabian, <laughs> Frankie Kazarian versus Chris Sabian, um, and you know those are just a couple of matches off the top of my head. Man, we have. Like if you think about all the crap that we've had to endure with some of the skits and stuff, you know, that I'm not really the biggest fan of, and I know that you guys are, if you, if you cut out some of that stuff and you just talk about pure match quality, what a hell of a run um, impact has been on in the last couple of years. Cause those are all matches that I've talked about that happened in the last two years, um, which, which is pretty incredible. And there's just so many more that I, that um, I know, like Jonathan Gresham versus Alex Shelley from two weeks ago. You already forget how good that one was because of what we just saw. And in Chicago, you fucks got spoiled, man. <laughs> man, you got three of the best matches in Impact history, in a history, uh, in a two day period, you bastards. Um, but you know the, there's been so many, so many great matches. We've been pretty, pretty spoiled. But anyway, um, you know, and Josh Alexander's name was said a lot during that, by the way. Um, so he, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull this up and hopefully, an Impact, please don't give me a copyright strike because I'm promoting your shit here. Wow, uh, that was, uh, you know, you can't tell me that Will Osprey is not an awesome promo. You know, people are like, oh, he's just a work rate guy, and he is a work rate guy, but the guy can promo, and the guy's got charisma, and he's got presence, and he's got everything that TNA would want. Um, and, <laughs> and here, here's the problem. <laughs> Uh, and I, I figured this was going to happen. And I think, you know, JD and I thought maybe that WWE would um, outbid AEW. And and uh, it looks like that is not the case. It looks like AEW, by the time most of you see this on YouTube and by the time most of you listen to this, this on Patreon, um, uh, AEW will likely have announced at full gear that Will Ospreay is signing with, um, with, a, with AEW. And... Um, I think that was always the most likely outcome, but there, there were some seeds of doubt in there based off things that the Osprey has been saying, um, you know, which is a pure negotiation tactics on his part. So smart. He hired Barry Bloom, a super agent, a guy that has gotten a lot of money for a lot of wrestlers for a long, long time. And, uh, yeah, I mean, he got, dating back to Jesse Ventura back in those days. So he is a super agent. So. Uh, it looks like that's where he's going to end up. Um, New Japan basically allowed Will to hire the agent and start negotiating before his contract was expiring. So they did him a solid. Like typically companies don't do that. And uh, uh, New Japan did that for him. And I think that's awesome. And um, Dave said that there were three three companies that were interested. Clearly the companies would have been WWE, AEW, and TNA. And it appears that AEW has won the Will Ospreay sweepstakes. Now, that is not official. Right? It's not official until it becomes official, right? Until it gets announced. But it looks like that's the case. Um, but after seeing that um, and after hearing what he said and seeing the energy and all the things that he has said and all his social media, um, I still think it is a possibility that we get at least one match with Will Ospreay in TNA because he also stated that his contract with New Japan runs to, to, to February. And even though, even if he does sign with AEW this weekend, um, that doesn't mean he's not going to fulfill his contracted dates with New Japan. And if they had him in Chicago, if uh, TNA had him in Chicago, knowing that he wanted to be there, I get the feeling that they it is possible that they have already negotiated one more date with Osprey uh, with TNA because you don't just say that and then and then not fulfill it. And if you're TNA, you don't post that clip on YouTube because that clip was never meant to be on television. That was always just part of that was like um, the match is over. The TV shows off and he's just talking to the crowd. So they could have just died at that point. But the fact that they aired that and promoted it on uh, on their YouTube and all their social media, that makes that tells me that there is a very likely um, there's a likelihood that Osprey is going to get in one more TNA match. And I want to pull this comment up from uh, 
from uh, Dobby the Brain Heenan, Mr. Dobby. Uh, he said, even if Osprey is signing with AEW tonight, as expected, the man put over the company like crazy for the past month during his three um, appearances. He absolutely did. He had three of the greatest matches in TNA history, um, all three of them. And I think it is possible um, that he will have one more. He will uh, have a fourth match, maybe even a fifth match, if he's able to do Hard to Kill. Now, Hard to Kill is going to be tricky because he is a he is a New Japan contracted talent, and New Japan is running opposition of Hard to Kill that night in San Jose. They're going to have their pay-per-view going um, for New Japan, New Japan Strong show. But Osprey doesn't do a ton of New Japan Strong. He really doesn't. Um, but I, it is possible that that he would be there instead of hard to kill. And then could they get dates on him in, um, in the, the show after that um, in Las Vegas at the Pearl? I think that you would want him at the Pearl. I don't think that you want, you know, you don't want to waste him in that little, I, they're going, they're doing another show in Orlando after that. I think the following week or two weeks after um, towards the end of January. And um, that's the same venue that they've been running. Uh, and I think it's, Kissimmee, Florida, or something, something. I can't remember. Uh, somebody will correct me on that. But it um, it can expand up to be pretty big. But I think the the spot that they run is typically pretty small. Um, so they didn't really change anything there. So I don't know if you want them. But the Pearl, that's a legit spot. And so if you can announce Will Osprey, I think um, for for the taping there, that'd be fantastic. But ideally, you would get him for the pay per view. And I have uh, I have an idea for it. Now he he mentioned when that when he was a kid the match that changed his life was Christopher Daniels versus Samoa Joe versus AJ Styles, um, and we all know the match. They did two matches, and we all know which one he's talking about. And I think JD and I actually did a watch along of that not that long ago, or probably a couple years ago. I have an idea. <clears throat> if if TNA is able to land Osprey for one night and one night only at Hard to Kill. I think the match that they should have, um, and I'll tell you the reasoning why, but the match that they should have is for the X Division title, Chris Saban versus Will Ospreay versus Josh Alexander. And then that and that's the main event. Um, I I I love that match. And I'm not a big fan of the three ways, but just knowing the history uh, and the fact that this is a DNA rebrand. And when people think of TNA, they think of all kinds of things, but they, one of the first things they think of that sets them apart from everybody else is the X division. Um, and that's the X division was near and dear to Osprey's heart. Um, I, uh, I, I think you put him in an X division title match. You make that the main event because of, of course the, the Joe styles and Daniel's match was for the X division title. It's one of the greatest matches in the company's history, probably the second best match in company history. And you headline it with that. And then you put three people in there that way, you, you know, if Osprey doesn't want to get pinned, you know, you could pin, you know, you know, Saban and Alexander can just pin each other. <laughs> so, and, and, and that's fine. Uh, but you still get, you still get Osprey, you get him in the main event, you get him in the X division uh, and then you can beat him without beating him. And, and then it also, it pays tribute to his favorite TNA match of all time. Um, and I think those three guys could, I think you can get five stars out of those three guys. I think that you could, and I would be salivating just to see like, if, if they can do this at some point, like get Alexander out of the ring, like put him through a table or something, or <laughs> something crazy. And then just watch Osprey and Saban go at it for like a good five to seven minutes. And then, you know, Alexander comes back. I, I think that would be cool. I'd like to see Saban versus Osprey um, at some point. Now, if you just do Saban versus Osprey and Saban beats him clean, that'd be great. Or if you do Alexander versus Osprey too, and then Alexander beats him clean. I just don't know that that's a possibility. I don't, I don't know if that is something that everybody would be able to agree on. Uh, I think in a perfect world, that's what you do, but I'm just thinking of it like logically. Like if you can get him, what's the biggest match that you could do where you don't have to beat him, but you don't have to, uh, you don't have, you know, you don't have him beating your people knowing that he's never coming back. And ideally you don't have somebody on your show that's never coming back, um, beat your guys. Right. Um, I mean, you could do it. The wins and losses aren't as important as they used to be. Clearly, fucking Moose lost to PCO, and he's in the world title match. Um, but I think that's what you do. I don't think that either Trinity versus Grace or Shelley versus Moose is um, a big enough match to to really do damage on pay per view, uh, and we'll or, or or at the box office. And and if you disagree with me, I'm going to tell you why I think that is. Uh, let's go back here to the share screen. So. 
Russell Ticks has been following it. They um, on on Twitter. If you take a look at it, so this is was updated just earlier this morning. Uh, TNA Wrestling Hard to Kill, Saturday, January thirteenth. Available or current setup is eleven hundred eighty tickets distributed so far. Five hundred four available tickets still out there. Six hundred and seventy six. Only moved twenty eight tickets in the last seven days. Twenty eight in a week. That's rough, man. That is tough. Um, and that's what, and the two matches that have been announced are Moose versus Shelly and Jordan Grace versus Trinity. So that's what they're capable of doing. So I think that you need a bigger hook than what we've seen, um, than what we have right now, uh, with, uh, with what's already been out there. And I, I think that that three way it would be the hook. Now, if they have another ace up their sleeve, like if they, if they do have a CM Punk, well then clearly that thing is probably going to sell out in a couple minutes. I think even announcing Osprey is going to be difficult to move tickets because Osprey, for as good as he is in the ring, he's not he's not an established draw yet. I think he's going to need sustained um, television time on one of the bigger shows before he ultimately becomes a huge draw in the states and a huge needle mover and a ratings mover. He's just not that yet. Um, so AEW is going to spend a lot of money on him, knowing that hopefully the investment will eventually pay off, and then it's not going to pay off immediately. It's not going to pay immediate uh, dividends. So, um, so that's that's going to be the tough thing. So they're they're going to have to announce a, a big hook. Um, now Dobby in the chat uh, says tickets not moving quick, but it's honestly moving faster than the normal ticket sales. Yeah, it's 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 above. I think it, it is definitely above. Um, the uh it's it's above the norm so the reason why we've sold as many as we have right now we tna has sold as many as they have so far is because of the excitement of tna and then of course the two matches so that's where they're at right now they have less they, they have you know like 60 more percent to sell so they're gonna have to do something big i don't think announcing tommy Dre versus crazy steve is gonna do it right i i don't you know if, unless it's chris Saban versus like a big name guy that's coming in i don't i don't think there's you know, anything that they could announce that really is going to move a lot of tickets because they don't have a ton of, you know, stars that sell tickets. Um, so they're going to have to get creative. And I think that they will. I think they're going to go all out for this. Um, they announced these first two matches and they saw where they could get, you know, um, they're less than half halfway sold. And uh, they know that they're going to have to do some work, hit the ground, do some local promoting, do all those types of things to, to get the rest. But if they can get a couple of big names on this show i think that we're going to see this thing sell out and hopefully we we see it um them open up more seats because there's a lot more tickets that they could sell they, there's a lot more tickets that they can open up so um but yeah i uh will osprey very likely going to be on full gear uh, tonight likely going to be signing exclusively with aew come february but i still um, holding out a little bit of hope that we get to see him uh do one match in tna um uh moving on so there's uh, you know th this this came out recently. Um, I guess you know a couple of different outlets have reported it. Not really, not not really a big deal. But a lot of people noticed that Mickey James was no longer on the uh, the the roster. Like she was not listed on the active roster for TNA, and um, and that was from PW Insider. So we'll go ahead and do um, we'll go ahead and uh, you know check this out together. So. Um, the report is that um, she was removed from the she was removed from the Impact Wrestling roster, so she's no longer listed as an active competitor on the roster. Uh, her profile has been removed from the company's roster page. PW Insider is reporting that Mickey James taking a break, saying sources within the company. I think Mickey also confirmed that on her podcast. So also noted the relationship between James and Impact remains strong. She's considered a company legend and could return at any time. Um, so here's, here's the kicker right here. And here's the reason why this, this is the most important part of the story that most people aren't talking about. James is believed to have been working without a contract and impact since returning in 2021. And June has reported that she was still a free agent despite regularly appearing on impact programming. Um, Fightful would later report that impact considers James woman of her word and that there's never been a real concern of her going back on her commitments. So, um, uh, yeah, so that, that was, that was the, that was the big thing there. So she was never really a contracted talent and i don't really think it's like a big thing um you know she kind of comes and goes anyway even you know this last time she took off time because of injury but she could have come back like a month or two earlier and um you know she'd been doing matches but they waited till they had something for her so you know that's mickey she's a legend she kind of comes and goes um and i think if they ended up 
figuring out like, hey, we got this story. Are you interested? She'd probably come back. Now, Nick Aldis is with uh, the WWE. Um, Royal Rumble is right around the corner. And I don't know. I can't think of anybody off the top of my head right now for the WWE Women's Hall of Fame coming up at WrestleMania. I, I think we should be on the lookout for Mickey James to be back in the Royal Rumble, which she's been in most, mostly all of them, with the exception of like one or two. Um, probably see her in the Women's Royal Rumble, and then I think that you know it'd be nice to see her get inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. I think after everything that she's been through with that company, and then after she does that, and if she doesn't sign a contract with WWE, I'd like to see her in the TNA Hall of Fame uh, next year. I think it would be like if anybody deserves to go in two Hall of Fames in one year, it'd be Mickey James, and I think that'd be really cool. So yeah, she's you know she's out. She could always be back. I don't think she's gone forever. She kind of. She kind of goes um, back and forth all the time. So no no big there, no big deal there. The one that I did find the most interesting, um, it was a little surprising to me, was, uh, we'll, and we'll pull up this report, that uh, Kenny King, of all people, uh, asked for his release, and it was granted. You know, you know, Kenny King had been getting used. He's on every episode. He always has kind of like a story going. But Fightful Select report on Thursday that King had asked for his asked for and was granted his release from the company this week. His most recent role with the company dates back to last year when he was part of Honor No More. Back in September, he'd lost a title versus career match against uh, Tommy Dreamer at Victory Road, where Dreamer defeated King to win the Digital Media Championship. His last match for the company took place in October, where he and Sheldon Jean lost to Ace Bay and Chris Austin, or Ace Austin and Chris Bay. Sorry. So yeah, uh, he, um, you know that that one surprised me. He's always been kind of a featured guy. He recently had had a title run. They never they never really got fully behind him, but honestly, no company ever has, and I don't think any company ever will. He's kind of a middle guy, and, that, and I think that's okay. Like again, like his his match with Speedball, I put that up there with one of my favorite matches ever on on uh, Impact. I, I, I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. And he was fantastic. So, and I thought he brought out the best in speedball. So could they have used him a lot better. I think that they could have, um, but they just kind of like, he's like a 40 year old guy that was never really a top guy. And this is just where they see him. And um, he asked for his release and uh, they didn't really have any issue, you know, giving it. Cause I think that they can, um, they can bring in people to replace him fairly easily, you know, with, with, uh, with what the return on investment for Kenny King is. So, um, is it, it's not really like a huge loss, but I did think that, you know, once he broke away from, from, uh, honor no more, I thought he had a pretty decent run in the company. I, I have enjoyed his stuff for a long time. And so I was, uh, I was a little bit surprised, a little disappointed. Um, but I, I'm on, I want to know, I want to know what he was thinking, like why he wanted his release. I, I like to learn from that. Um, cause I felt like, TNA probably used him as good or better than anybody else would. So um, that one is curious to me. So I, I am very interested in that. Um, so, and I, I don't, I don't know the reasoning yet. No one has really been reported, but um, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, but uh, yeah. Uh, and Dobby in the chat says, uh, he says he thinks uh, Kenny uh, was one year was up in January with no real future shows until then he got a jump start on free agency asking out now good good on them for letting him go yeah no i i agree good on them for letting him go maybe uh court bauer should think of the same and uh and let some of his folks go that have no real future with his company um i think i think that would be nice let, yeah look look if it's like a middle of the road guy you know and you don't really have a bunch invested into them like um and, that, and i think that was kenny like if they want to go do something else let them so but where where he goes you know you know you know, NWA, uh, MLW, I wouldn't be shocked to see him on MLW tonight. I think MLW's got a show tonight and uh, that they do one of their monthly shows. It wouldn't surprise me to see him on that because, you know, people are fleeing that company left and right. So and maybe he got a good deal there. Who knows? But um, so that's really it for the news. We haven't, you know, the ratings for the, the show, I haven't really been talking about them lately because they, A, they've just been, they've just been really subpar, but they're not even trying to have good ratings. Um, even though this week I've, I, I think this week's episode in the ring was probably one of the best that they've ever had. Um, I'd like to hear what Garrett Kidney thinks about that. 
you know, he's like the encyclopedia. Um, but you know, between all the matches that they had, it was just like nonstop action. Like that was like, total nonstop, but like, for, like legit, like I didn't even think about that as I said it, but it was just lots of great action all the way up and down. Uh, and no real, like it was just an easy watch. It was just a really fun show that I really, really enjoyed. Um, so, but um, everything was centered around um, Osprey versus Josh Alexander, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna get to it. So the show opens up with the Impact World Tag Team Champions ABC um, defeating Kenny King and Sheldon Jean uh, in Kenny King's last match for the company. Um, I really enjoyed this match. <laughs> I, thought, I thought this was fantastic. I, uh, I, man, I'm disappointed because I I feel like there's legs with King and Jean as a team. You know, Michelle and Jean being the understudy and then eventually could turn on King or King could turn on him and they could do something. You know, Sheldon is green and, and uh, you know, it'd be nice to see him attach himself to a veteran like King for a bit longer. But, you know, it just didn't quite work out. King's going to go do something else. So and uh, and good for him. And you know what? Nobody ever truly leaves TNA forever. He'll probably end up back. It'll probably be a surprise entrant in like their fucking battle royal next year. But um but i i I, th I thought this was great shout out to josiah for uh, for doing the recap again this week he's 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 back in the recap world for uh for doing tna stuff so um i'm really excited about that but um let's go here to the end bay tagged in and uh they went for the one two sweep but gene made another save pulling austin from the ring and hitting a leg lariat bay took gene out with a drop kick but turned into a tiger driver for a two count king hit a nice blockbuster off the apron and on bay and gene hit a pop-up neck breaker on bay for a two count King missed a Torreno uh, to the floor, and Bay hit him with a tope con hero before ABC hit the one-two sweet for the pinfall on Gene. And then they go backstage. MK Ultra claimed to be the ones that controlled the knockouts division, not that they were going to reshape reality. All right, they were unstoppable. Um, I like I like MK Ultra. Um, it's a great name, especially considering we just uh, dropped our JFK 60th anniversary special um, of the assassination. Because if you got, look it up, look into it, man, look into it. I want you guys. This is not a this is not a conspiracy podcast, but I just want you guys to Google Jack Ruby and MK Ultra, and it'll blow your mind. I'm telling you guys, it's legit. Anyway, um, Moose with Brian Myers defeated Heath, and what? is very likely Heath's last match here in the company. So, um, and Moose posted this on his Facebook. I don't know how I'm Facebook friends with him, but I am. Um, but he posted, I, I, it might be a fake. I don't know, but it seems legit. And it's the same stuff that he posts on Instagram and Twitter. So um, maybe it's like a fan doing it, but uh, uh, he posted that uh, he posted that it was Heath's last match. I don't know if he's supposed to say that, but uh, I think his, his contract expired back in October and uh, this was his final date on his deal. So um, they uh, Moose had Heath's first match and then had Heath's last match and looks like, and he said that they're really good friends and um, but that's, looks like it's the end of Heath's run and um, you know, good for him getting a payday for the last three years. Um, maybe we'll see him back in WWE or maybe we'll see him, you know, NWA would be a good spot for Heath. I think um, with what he does and what they like to do, um, I could see him having a run at the NWA title with a EC3. But um, Moose getting some wins. I like him getting wins. I'm still pissed he lost at the pay-per-view, but uh, at least they're getting some wins. And then afterwards, they set up um, – they, they set up um, – hold on just a sec. They they set up um, Moose and um, Moose versus uh, Rhino for final resol resolution. So, um, but uh, good stuff. I like the match. Um, next, we go to a Luchador trios match. We have a Laredo Kid, Black Tarus, Juventud Guerrero defeating the Rascals, Trey Miguel, Zachary Wentz, and making his TNA debut, Myron Reed. Um, I know not everybody's a big fan of Lucha. I am. And I loved this. I thought it was pure action, pure fun. Uh, I liked Conan being on the call here doing color commentary. Um, and he was talking about it like out of character, which is funny. He's supposed to be in character. But um, he was talking about Lucha Libre as if it's all fake, <laughs> which it is. But uh, I, 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 really enjoyed, I really enjoyed this match. Uh, I, I, I dug it, man. I, and Josiah, God bless you for all for writing this whole write up. I'm not gonna get to read the whole thing because so many things happened. But I'll get, I'll get here to the finishing sequences here. But uh, once Miguel cut him off, and they immediately went to work on Laredo Kid hitting, 
hitting an awesome triple team drop kick that involves Reed and Wentz and the flipping Miguel into the air before hitting a basement drop kick. That was really cool. Uh, Laredo kick hit a flipping DDT on Wentz while Myron Reed flew over the ropes into a cutter to the floor onto Roos, uh, who was on the apron. Wentz hit a UFO cutter on Kig and Hoovy hit a gory special on Wentz. Black to Roos came and hit a destination ho hole on Reed for the pinfall. Just a wonderful match. I loved it, loved it, loved it. Great stuff. And the Luchadors finally won. Um, which was cool. Uh, they pinned Myron Reed. I hope Reed comes back. I think he's a guy that uh, would fit in nicely with the TNA. And next, we go to Bully Ray and Jordan Grace defeating Steve Macklin and Kylan King. This was fine. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of uh, intergender stuff, but it was uh, it was fine for what it was. Uh, Grace hit the Grace driver um, on uh, on. Kylan King and uh, got the victory. And then afterwards, a uh, bully grabbed the call your shot trophy and held it while standing behind grace. Instead of hitting her with it, he told her to take it. She pulled away from her while Ray looked on with intensity as he clearly wanted to win at the pay-per-view. However, Ray offered his hand to grace and they shook and Ray raised her hand in victory. The signifying bully Ray is now babyface. Uh, Trinity defeated Sunny kiss. Okay. So I, I thought this was, I thought this was fine. I did feel like, Sunny Kiss was gassed out pretty quick. Um, maybe Sunny's just not been around in a while, but I felt like Sunny, um, while still hitting big moves throughout the match, just seemed like she was gassed. <laughs> so, you know, I felt bad for her. But uh, th this was okay. Lots of big moves. Um, uh, Kiss draped Trinity across the middle rope in the corner, hit a handspring into a leg drop. Uh, Trinity dodged an attack, hit a head scissor into a DDT before hitting a full Nelson bomb for the pin. So uh, there you go. Th this was this was fine. Probably like two and a half, three stars. Yeah, no big deal there. Uh, Tr Trinity is okay in the ring. She's not great. Uh, Alex Shelley and Chris Saban were backstage and the Motor City Machine Guns talked about Josh Alexander facing Osprey while talking about um, Alexander and Zack Sabre Jr. Team, Z Sabre Jr. teaming together to face them at Impact Wrestling Final Resolution. So building up Final Resolution uh, coming up, which I will have a full recap right here on the Patreon. Uh, will Osprey in the main event defeated Josh Alexander in... Um, what is being reported as hold on let's uh let's let's just read what dave uh uncle dave thought about this match i know some of you guys are anti-dave and that's fine that's your prerogative but i happen to be a fan of his work so um let's read what he said the will osprey versus josh alexander match from the tv taping in chicago aired on uh, november 16 it was another incredible match very different from the usual osprey match because it was all about selling the right ankle and alexander constantly going for ankle locks the leg went out on a uh, os cutter, and Osprey sold it, including collapsing the first time. And he tried to hit a hidden blade. Osprey's first stormbreaker was reversed into a tombstone pile driver. That was my favorite moment of the match, by the way. Osprey won in 26:05 with a storm driver, hidden blade, the back of the head, and a stormbreaker. I'd go four and three quarters for that one. So Dave gives it four and three quarters stars there. Um, I don't disagree with that. Star ratings are very weird anyway and subjective, but he really loved the match. Um, and this is from Josiah. Josiah McDonald said, "My goodness, this was a great match. This should surprise. Um, this shouldn't surprise anyone. As Osprey and Alexander, two of the best wrestlers alive today. This was not quite as good as the Os Osprey Speedball, but I suspect there will be some that like this one more. Excellent match. Um, you know what? I think the reason why this one's higher rated, the the one at Bound for Glory with Speedball is higher rated, is just because there was more heat in the match." It was the first time we'd seen Osprey. The crowd was going crazy. They were on their feet. It was the middle of the pay-per-view. It was just lively, and it was just big time. Uh, the crowd was a little bit down for this one compared to the other match. Um, so that's why I would say this match was a little less good. But I think in the ring, in the ring, what they did compared, I think, just as well to the speedball thing. But the audience really does have a big say in, in, um, in how good matches are. And if the audience is up for it the entire time and going crazy like they were for the speedball one, then I think that um, that this one would have been probably rated higher if we had that same audience. Um, not to say that the audience was bad. It was better than you would get from most Impact shows. Um, and it was a tr just a tr tremendous, tremendous match. Um probably the greatest match in the history of the impact wrestling television show and one of the top five matches in tna history um and it's just been a pleasure to be able to call osper to talk about osprey's work here let's go here to the finish um alexander managed to hit a chaos theory for a two count osprey then hit an os cutter on alexander and held the transitioning to a stormbreaker but as he spun into the air 
Uh, he transitioned into a tombstone pile driver on Osprey for a two count. That was that twisting one that um, that uh, Kazuchika Okada does. Alexander went for the C4 spike, but Osprey floated out and nailed the hidden blade for a two count. Osprey immediately transitioned into the Storm Driver 93, hit another hidden blade and a Stormbreaker for the victory. Um, this was the the final the final show um, for the current um, Impact as you, as you guys know it. Uh, and as we as we know it um, for the rest of the year, and I thought they went out on a on a high note. I know it's probably not going to be very highly rated because the show's been kind of a lame duck. There's no storylines, but I thought it was one of the better episodes of Impact, and uh, they really went out well. Um, next week Thanksgiving special. Two weeks after that is IPWF, and then I think after that they got uh, some stuff from Mexico, and then it looks like they'll probably be off the rest of the year. So uh, um, just bang it right here to Patreon.com/slash The Mike and JD Show. And I'm going to be here every single week. I'm not stopping every single week. Um, YouTube, sorry, you're not getting that much content the rest of the year. I might get you some clips, but full episodes are going to be exclusive to the Patreon um, through the rest of the year. And we might get some full stuff back on YouTube um, early next year um, as we get the new TNA as part of the relaunch. Okay. Um, but thanks, everybody, for being here. Thank you, W. Brain Heenan, uh, in the chat today. And thank you all the Patreon subscribers. Uh, and until next week, should I say it? Should I say it? Mahalo.